the prevail we're so excited you're here this morning we got a full house this morning we're really excited to be here i hope you're excited to be here come on let's just praise him and welcome him into this building right now come on Real quick, let's, let's pray. Let's, Father, right now, we thank you for the ability to come into this house and into your presence. We thank you for the blessings that you're going to give us today, and we thank you for the word that's going to come today, Father. We just ask you right now to come into this place. Pour yourself out on us. We are so excited to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, before this service, God kind of gave me a word really quick to, to, to impart on you going into this worship. And he took me to Exodus 15. And I'll start with one to run through two. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him for my father's God and I will exalt him. Skipping down to 11 real quick. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? I just want everybody in this room right now to repeat after me. No one is greater. No, no, I didn't hear you. I said, say, no one is greater. Come on, let's hear it. No one is greater. We lift you up. Come on. And as we
Say we can't walk. We can't walk without you. Without you. Come on, say we can't talk. We can't talk without you. Without you. We can't live. We can't live without you. Have your way. Come on, one more time. Say we can't walk. join us in communion this morning, and I'm going to say a prayer, and you just repeat after me. I love that we can all join together in this as a family. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your Son. By the stripes that fell on his back. By the stripes that fell on his back. My body is healed. My body is healed. From the crown of my head. From the crown of my head. To the very soles of my feet. To the very soles of my feet. Every cell. Every cell. Every organ. Every organ. Every function of my body is healed. Restored. Restored. And renewed. In Jesus' name. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. You may take your body. Lord Jesus, 
Thank you for your precious blood. Your sin-free, disease-free, poverty-free life is in your blood. Poverty-free life is in your blood. And your shed blood has removed every sin from my life. Has removed every sin from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all my sins. Past, present, and future. And made completely righteous. Today I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous. Of the righteous. Which is preservation, which is preservation, healing, healing wholeness, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Let me take the blood. Have your way. Come on, say have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way. your hands towards heaven. Just for a moment, begin to focus Father, in on heaven. Thank you, thank you, Father. If God's been good to you, I want to lift your voice and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Come on, if he's worthy of your worship, let him know how good he is to you. i 
has had me in John 11 and for those of you who don't that's the story of Lazarus and in that story there's a situation for those who have who aren't familiar where someone that was very dear to Jesus is very sick and they send for Jesus and Jesus doesn't come as fast as they want him to even though he promised that it won't end in death. Jesus does go and there's frustration and Martha is so upset because Jesus let Lazarus die, that he had been in the tomb, that he hadn't done it on her timeline when she thought it needed to be done. But you see, Jesus had another plan and he had another timeline and God has another timeline for you because Jesus walked in that room and, Je and Lazarus stood up. So what I'm here to tell you today is he has won the victory for you. No matter what your circumstance that you're going through, no matter what it is that is weighing on you, I know that it might feel like you're not hearing from God or you're not seeing the movement from God. But if God has made you a promise, Come on. if God has told you something will happen, yeah. it might not happen on your timeline, but it's going to happen right. because God said it would happen. And let me... And let me say this that the way you get through this moment, even when you're not seeing it, is to worship him, is to lift your hands up and praise him and sing about how the victory is here. No matter what you see, God is bringing it. No matter what your timeline, God has his timeline for you. Come on, everybody, let's sing some more.
finished It's finished It's finished It is finished Come on, Casey So glad, so glad want to pray with everyone at home, everyone in this room. And I want to pray for you because all of us are struggling. All of us have something. And I think now in this moment, God wants us to release that pressure, release all that stress to him that is weighing on you because of whatever it is, because it is finished. So right now, just lift your, if you're at home, lift your hands towards the screen. Just lift them up, lift them up, lift them up. And let's pray. Father, right now, I just ask you to be with each and every person who can hear my voice. I just ask you, Father, to please release that stress. Relieve that pressure. Show them that you, you are the king. And that it is finished. It is done that no matter what promise you have made to them, that they can release that to you and know that it is done right now. Father, thank you so much for that blessing, that blessing that we no longer have to worry about the things you make promises about. Because we can just give those things to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And I just want each and every person, if you are struggling with something at home, if you're struggling in this room, I want you to reach out. If you're in this room, reach out to one of the pastors, reach out one of the leaders, or you can just text PREVAIL to 84576. And we're going to get somebody in contact with you that's going to be able to pray with you and help you through this moment. Because I know the struggle. I know how it feels when it just doesn't seem breakthrough is coming. But I can tell you this. If God promised it, it is coming. It is coming. Because it is finished. It is finished. Y'all sing this. Say, I, I surrender. to thee.
of submission. I think sometimes, and I don't know, you know, maybe it's culture or society, but a lot of times we, we're so on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. But it's something about just stopping and just settling in into the moment that God has you in. I was, we were watching a TV show late last night, and right at the end of the show, like, so much drama happened. Like, we watched this, it was a drama film show, okay? And this woman had, went through so much, and pretty much her whole family was wrecked. And at the end of the show, like, she wasn't talking to her friend anymore or anything like this, and a lot happened. But the friend showed up at the house, walked in, and literally just walked up to her and put her hand on her shoulder, and she just began to break. Like, it was an emotional moment in the show, and I was sitting there like, I'm not crying, I'm not crying, I'm, I'm not even crying. But she began to break, and she just began to weep. And it, and it got to the point me and Aaron were laughing because we were like, she having a Holy Ghost moment right now, like straight up. But she, her arms got limp and everything. She just fell in this woman's arm. And I was watching and the Lord said, Fred, that's, that's how I want you guys to be with me all the time. I want to be your strength. I want to be your joy. I want to be your peace. I want to be your happiness. I want to be everything you, you need. And as I was just sitting there watching that, the Lord just began to say, we put value on so many other things. And we place priority on so many things above God that we miss the opportunity to just lay in his arms. We showed up this morning, we've been singing Surrender All and Have Your Way. And, and we'll sing these songs forgetting what they actually mean. We're not just telling God, yo, show up at my house and sit on the couch. No, we're saying, God, come to my house, cook me a feast, cook me a meal. My house is yours. Anything you want to do in this house is yours. We're saying, Lord, I give you ownership of everything in here. If you want to throw some stuff away, throw it away. If you want to bring in some new dishes because you don't like my old dishes, bring in the new dishes. Why am I talking about houses on Lord Jesus? But you get what I'm saying? We need to learn how to surrender all. And I think in our, I'm just going to speak real quick. In our society, we have painted surrendering all as a bad thing as a negative thing. Well, if I'm completely submitted to God, I'm not going to be cool anymore. People might think I'm hateful like some of them other Christians. They might think that I dislike this person or this kind of person or this people group. But the reality is, listen to me, your relationship with Jesus is your relationship with Jesus. Not anybody else's. Amen? And you can be 100% sub submitted to the Lord and still love everybody. Did you know that? You can be 100% submitted to the Lord and still care for people. You can be 100% submitted to the Lord and still listen to people. You can be 100% submitted to the Lord and still believe in the best. You don't have to hate what the general consensus hates. You don't have to dislike people because you know your church. But they told me at church I have to dislike you. The devil's a liar. Amen? We can be 100% submitted to the Lord and still live a great life. But society has told us, churches have told us, people have told us that to be submitted to the Lord means you, you have to give up 
any of these earthly desires and pleasures, and God will never do anything great in your life. The devil is a liar. God's plan for you, uh, the Bible says that his promises are yes and amen. He says that he has good things planned for you. So when you give your life and you submit to him, you're not giving up some, some okay thing for a worse thing. Giving up good things for great things. Amen? I don't know, I just felt like sharing that, but I feel like God's in this moment. And we got to reframe our mindset on what it means to be surrendered to the Lord. You're not uncool because you don't want to hang out every night and drink and do all this stuff. I don't mean you're better than somebody. The Lord has changed something in you. It's okay. Amen? But at the same time, we got to keep loving folks and telling people that they're loved by the Lord unconditionally. Amen. I'm tired of seeing everybody walking around with these heads down, not knowing Jesus is on their side. And we live in a terrible, terrible time people just think that the Lord's out to get them, but he's not. He's out to get you so he can do something great for you. Amen. So, anyways. Y'all, thank y'all. Put, put your hands together for that worship team. Now put your hands together for Jesus.